From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Are you... Are you from Hartford? Hello? What was that? Are you the insurance investigator? Yeah, that's right. You're here about the Alma Scott shooting? Yes, who is this? This is Alan Swain. Is this a gang? No, it isn't a gang. Well, it's about time you gave yourself up, isn't it? No, no, I won't. Because I didn't kill her. Why did you take a run out? I don't know. I've done everything wrong, but I didn't kill her. I want to talk to you if you'll promise not to go to the police first. All right, I can do that. How can we work it so I'll be sure? Are you still in San Francisco? So I'll be... Yeah. I'll be alone. My word is good. Edmund O'Brien in a transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office Columbia All Risk Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Alma Scott matter. Expense account item one, $219 airfare and incidentals between Hartford and San Francisco. For a day and a half, the investigation had taken the form of a search for the man who called me, Alan Swain. Four witnesses, tenants in the dead girl's apartment house, had seen him running away in the corridor outside her flat immediately after they'd heard the shots. So when this chief suspect phoned about eight that second night, to say that he was innocent and wanted to see me, I was naturally more than anxious to set the meeting up. Later, I wasn't so happy about it. According to arrangements, I cabbed to the corner of Fulton 26th Avenue, found a photography shop in front of which I was supposed to be picked up, and stood there for about five minutes looking at the pictures of some uninteresting brides. Hello, mister. Hi. You marry one of those? No, thanks. I'm supposed to meet somebody here. You live in the neighborhood? No, I'm from Hartford, Connecticut. And I guess we were fated to meet. What about the guy that called me? I thought he was going to show up. He changed his mind. I'll take you to him. Come on, there's a cab waiting around the corner. I memorized the number of the cab, hoping it might have picked her up at some address that might be useful later. It was a silent trip. The girl with a pretty but rather hard face slumped in her corner, looking almost bored except for the fact that she smoked one cigarette after another. When we left the cab in front of a cafe on a coast highway, she took my arm and led me away from the lights across the road toward the sand. And there, behind the added protection of a low concrete abutment, I met Alan Swain. He did come along. You weren't followed, were you? Ask him. I've gotten out of the habit of trusting people, so I wouldn't want to say. I told you my word was good, Swain. Maybe you deserve it, maybe you don't. What do you mean? Well, from the beginning, I haven't been able to figure how a guy like you got mixed up with a woman like Alma Scott. I wish you'd been here a month ago to knock that into his thick skull. I'll lay off, Helen. It doesn't do any good now. It never did. I didn't kill her, Mr. Dollar. I swear I didn't. Then why have you done everything a guilty man would do? You were seen running away from the scene and getting into your car. You abandoned that. A cab driver remembers picking you up a block away from where it was found and bringing you back to Market Street. Everything you did has been done by scared killers before. I know, I know I did everything wrong, but I didn't kill her. I wasn't even in her apartment. To match all the testimony that says you did kill her, can you put your hands on any that says you didn't? No. When I was in the hall, when I heard the shots, well, if I'd gone on in instead of losing my nerve and running, I could have cleared myself, but if I didn't, all I thought of was my own hide. Then when it was too late, I realized the police would never believe anything I said. What makes you think I will? I don't know. I'm just asking you to give me a chance. A chance to do what? I want to tell you what led up to that night. It doesn't make any difference how I met her or anything. I knew she was no angel, but I never thought she was all bad. And I still don't. That's what two years of college does for you. Don't lay off, Helen. Four years, you'd be 100% blind. What's your story about that night? Alma and I were going to leave town. We were going to fly to Mexico and get married. Then we were going to Los Angeles and stay there. She wanted to get away from this town and the people she knew here. I don't think that's worth much, but is there any way I can check it? Plain reservations? Yeah. They're under the name of A.J. Hall for next Friday night at 9. What airline? Cal, Mexico. Why the switch of names? Well, Alma said there might be people who wouldn't want her to leave, and she didn't want it to leak out. We were going to cancel the reservations under that name and make them under our own Friday morning to match our identification at the border. Who was she afraid of? 
I don't know. She wouldn't tell me. Probably had a big choice. Do you know who? New in town, but give me time. Okay. What's the rest of it, Swain? Well, she broke a date with me that night. Said she wasn't feeling so good. Then about ten, she phoned and told me she'd changed her mind about going away with me. What reason did she give? She didn't give any. She hung up. I started right over to her place. It only took me five minutes. When I got there, I stopped just outside her door because I heard her talking to somebody. What about? Well, I, I didn't understand the words, but she was sort of screaming. I started for the door again, and that's when I heard the shots. And I don't know what happened to me, except that I thought whatever was happening was somehow my fault. And I ran. That's all I know. That's all? Yeah. What do you think I can do with that? I don't know, but it's the truth. There must be a way you can find out who was in there with her. Don't you have any idea who it was? No. Man or a woman? Why, a man. It must have been a man. Did you hear a man say anything? No, but there must be some way to find out who was there. I don't know what it is, but I'll follow it up. And you you won't tell the police? About meeting you? I doubt they'd believe me if I did. You can phone me if you think of anything. All right. Are you coming with me, Helen? It's not cricket to pick a man up and then just drop him. Maybe I can lure him into the bar over there so he won't see you leave. Think you can afford me? Temporarily, yeah. I'm on an expense account. Hello. The bar, or do you want a booth? Booth, please. This one over here okay? Yeah. Yeah, sure, it's fine. I'll take your order. Uh, an old-fashioned, I guess. Rye and soda. Uh-huh. Okay. Rye old and a high with soda. I, uh... It's not generally known that Swain has a sister, is it? Do you think he has? Uh, you're too young to be his mother. Thanks. I can't quite see you in that woman scorned part. I've been there. Can I have a light? Oh, sorry. Tell me something. Why do you think a woman might have killed him? I didn't say that, did I? You asked Al if he knew whether it was a man or a woman. It was nothing but wishful thinking. She carried a life insurance policy with a half-sister as beneficiary. We can't find it. Huh. I hadn't even thought of that kind of an angle. It never crossed my mind that she was killed for any reason except what sort of a dame she was. What kind? Oh, don't get me started. Hasn't anybody else's name come up? She knew a lot of men. Well, it's been open and shut against Swain. With that lineup of witnesses, the police certainly have no reason to chase after anybody else. Any ideas? Yeah. The guy she dropped when she put a leash on Al... His name is Walter Helm. The police know him if you don't. You mean you think he killed her? He found out they were going to Mexico, I think he would have. Or had it done. Why didn't Swain tell me this? Because he didn't know. That dame never bothered to tell him. She was using him for something, and she didn't want to scare him away. You didn't warn him? I had a better idea. But things seemed to backfire. Now it's got me to thank for this messy thing. I tipped Walter Helm that they were leaving for Mexico. How did I know Al would go storming up there? I don't have the faintest notion, but I wish you'd phoned a different detective. You don't have to follow it up if you don't want to. That's all I've got to say, and I don't want to drink. Maybe some other time. I didn't wait for mine, either. I settled the bill and followed her out. I was in time to see her get into a cab whose number I added to the one we'd come out in. And I waited 20 minutes for another to take me back to my hotel. I had no idea of sharing with the police or tossing at Walter Helm the vague hearsay evidence that had been given me. It seemed to me the logical place to go was back to the tenants in Alma Scott's apartment building. And the developments that followed paint a fairly true picture of that hindrance to accurate investigation, the average witness. I won't bother quoting all four at the address, but Mrs. Swinehart will serve as a composite. Why, yes, Mr. Dollar. I'm glad that I can be of service. I'll do anything I can. Thank you, Mrs. Swinehart. I, uh... I just come from talking with Mr. Robertson down the hall. Oh, yes. Didn't you say that he was already in the corridor the other night when you got there? Yes, he was. Uh-huh. Well, he seems to think now that you were there before he was. Oh, but that's not so. I remember distinctly. I went out, and as you know, the Robertson apartment is across and to the rear of the one that woman lived in. Toward the rear of the building from Miss Scott. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, why, when I went out, the first person I saw was Mr. Robertson standing there. Then I heard the sound of running up toward the front and saw this man. He was running toward the street entrance? Yes, he was. So you looked very briefly toward the rear. And saw Mr. Robertson. And then turned toward the sound? Yes. Uh-huh. 
Are you absolutely positive that it was Mr. Robertson you saw? Oh, of course I am. Was anything said? No. Nobody said anything for a minute. We were startled, you know. Now, Mr. Robertson remembers that as soon as he came out and saw you, he asked you what had happened. Oh, well, Mr. Robertson was wrong. He was there when I came out. If he said anything, I didn't hear him. Could it be that you expected to see Mr. Robertson standing where you had so often seen him, and after a glance that took maybe a second, your mind automatically said, that is Mr. Robertson? Mr. Dollar, I know what I saw. What's the meaning of this? It's just possible that there was a second man mixed up in this thing the other night. A man who might have come out of Miss Scott's apartment and instead of bolting toward the front entrance, gone quietly to the rear stairway and out the back. Oh, dear. That's why it's so important that you're sure. Could it have been someone else that you glanced at and glanced away from? Someone who left while your attention was on the running man? Oh, I was sure it was Mr. Robertson. The second time you looked, it was. We're all sure of that. For that first glance. I was so sure. It might be that Swain, who looked so guilty, might not be. It could be the difference between life and death to him. Oh, now you have confused me. I was so sure. But I shouldn't like to call Mr. Robertson a liar if he truly believes that I was in the corridor when he came out. After all, it, it all was so sudden and shocking. I I suppose anybody's mind could play tricks, as you say. Will you come and talk to Mr. Robertson with me? Oh, dear. Yes, I will. But I'd so hope we'd heard the end of this dreadful thing. In less than an hour, four positive witnesses had broken down in the face of doubt. None of them could swear that there had been a second stranger in the hallway. But neither could they swear that there hadn't been. And none of them had actually seen Alan Swain come out of the Scott apartment. I didn't look forward to telling the police what was happening to their open and shut case without at least something constructive to offer. At three that afternoon, I still didn't have it. But I got it when I stopped by my hotel to check the phone calls. The clerk told me that a Mr. Walter Helm was waiting for me in the bar, first table to the left. Uh, Mr. Helm? That's right. My name is Dollar. Oh, sit down. What are you drinking? Nothing, thanks. It's a little early for me. I don't suppose you know anything about me, but I'll get right to the point. The papers say you're working on the Alma Scott case. I have an interest in it. She was a friend of mine. Oh? You've got to do something about finding that maniac that killed her. Well, if you think you can help, you ought to go to the police. I don't want to go to the police. I want to talk to you. Where can we do it in private? Your room? I guess so. If you've got reason to keep it that private. I have. Come on. Which way do we go? <laughs> Turn to yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Assets, one block of wood. Liabilities, more trouble than the legendary paper hanger with a hide. It sounds as though Edgar Bergen had a pretty bad bank balance, doesn't it? But luckily for all of us, he comes back week after week to CBS Radio with his block of wood named Charlie and lets himself in for more trouble. As for you, you're really in the chips when you take in the Edgar Bergen Charlie McCarthy Show, heard over most of these stations every Sunday. Don't miss them tomorrow night on CBS Radio. Now, with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. you. Thanks. What's the matter, Dollar? I don't get you. Yes, you do. You're acting funny, like you've got certain ideas about me. Your name came up in a conversation last night. What about? The killing you've got an interest in. What else? Who is this conversation with? You don't expect me to tell you. <laughs> we won't get any place this way. Somewhere along the line, you picked up the wrong idea about me. Let's get it straightened out. I just spent an hour looking you up in a newspaper morgue. That's hardly the way to build towards a fast and strong friendship. That's business. It's got nothing to do with you and me. I came here to talk about Alma. Well, let's get it over with then. I'll level with you. I've been waiting for a call from the police and it hasn't come. I know they'll pin something on me if they can. They've been trying for years. 
That's why I want to do something about seeing that Swain maniac picked up. So it can be pinned on him? That's where it belongs. I don't care what you think about me. You can't go along with them letting a crazy killer go free because they want to put me away, can you? I didn't know that's what they were doing. They will if they get the chance. What did they do with that check? Burn it up? What are you talking about? What check? A cashier's check for $15,000. I gave it to Alma. I knew her well enough to know I didn't have to kill her to keep her from going to Mexico where that's come. She got tired of me before, but not so tired a small gift wouldn't bring her back. I knew I was a sucker, but if that was the only way I could keep her, it was all right with me. Ah, that doesn't sit so well. That's the way it was. Maybe this time money wouldn't keep her. You're wrong. She changed her mind. She wasn't going. One thing interests me. How did you know she was going to Mexico? How'd you find out? Swain's sister phoned me. Half crazy about his life being ruined. He said if I didn't do something to stop it, she would. What day was that? The day Alma was killed. I went over that afternoon with a check and had a talk with her. That's when she changed her mind. Hmm. I've been on this thing pretty much from the beginning. And there wasn't a check... And they got rid of it. They're trying to pin this thing on me. There's a record kept of cashier's checks. If you bought one, you can prove it by going to the bank. Not if you're Walter Helm, you can't. He'll say I bribed somebody. And probably pay a few bucks themselves to prove that. That's one of the things I want you to do. Go to the bank. So you'll believe me about that check. I'll pay you. Your own price. Aren't you afraid they'd make that out of Brian? They would if they could. But this is legit. You've got a private license. You're for hire, aren't you? Not by a suspect, after I've been given access to state's evidence. What kind of evidence? I could really make this worth your while. Just between you and me. I feel sorry for you, Helm. You're a big wheel. But when you can't count on your money getting you something or getting you out of something, you're lost. Because nobody will take you, anything you say, or anything you do at face value. Maybe you're right. I'm not complaining, but... Maybe this is the deal that sets you right. The papers say she was killed by a 32. That's It the... hasn't been found yet. Oh, a town like this is probably at the bottom of the bay or in the ocean, don't you think? Well, that's a shame. A 32 is all they need to really pin it on me. How come? I gave it to her. It's registered to me. How do you know that was the gun that killed her? She kept it in a drawer in the living room. And you didn't find one in the apartment any place, did you? If that's true. You wouldn't hurt yourself by telling the police. You tell them, not me. I thought I could talk business with you, Doc. You say you're not for hire. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to post a reward. $20,000. That might be a smart move. It will be legit. Read about it in tonight's papers. <laughs> The notice made the front page of the paper I got under the caption, Cooling Murder Sparked by Reward. And strangely enough, it sounded sincere, not slanted towards Swain as I'd halfway expected, but offering 20000 for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons who murdered Miss Alma Scott. I didn't know how the police fared, but as far as I was concerned, reaction set in almost immediately. Johnny Dollar. This is Alan Swain. Oh, uh, how are you making out? Now, what kind of a trick is this that Helm is pulling? This thing in the paper. I don't know. It's got news value, and he must have laid cash on the line. Might even be on the level. Oh, you're crazy. It can't be on the level. You know that. He says he didn't kill her. You talked to him? Yeah. What did he say? Just that, that he didn't kill her. I'm surprised you're so upset. According to your sister, you didn't know anything about him. She told me about it last night. This is a mess, and something will have to be done. It should have been done a long time ago. Why don't you give yourself up, Swain? No, I won't. That would be the best thing to do. No, I won't. I wish I'd gotten out of town while I could, but I listened to Helen. Come on in and talk about it, Swain. No, no. It's too much against me. The police don't care that I didn't kill her. They don't care who they get just so they get somebody. Well, they'll have to find me. The case against you isn't as strong as it was. What do you mean? The witnesses who saw you outside Alma's apartment, they aren't sure now that they didn't see somebody else, too. Are you telling me the truth? Sure I am. That's what I mean. Come in and talk about it. No. No, I'll have to think. I'll have to talk to Helen. I don't know what this reward is going to mean. This reward trick of Helm's. I'll have to think and I'll call you back. The 
phone rang again about an hour and a half later. I thought it was Swain, but it wasn't. It was Lieutenant Halloran at police headquarters. He had a confession to Alma Scott's murder that he wanted to talk to me about. It was made, he said, by a woman who claimed she was Alan Swain's sister. This dame says she knows you, that she met you last night. I guess she did. She says you met Swain and her at the beach. This guy phoned me, Lieutenant. It could have been a crank. It could have been anything. I met them, and nothing they said would have done you any good, so I didn't bother with it. Bother me with it? With what we haven't had, did you think I'd mind picking up a suspect? Uh, you know my racket. Sometimes I have to give my word. If I get out of the habit of keeping it, I'm going to miss a lot of bets. Sometimes I wish I was still a private cop and could get away with that stuff again. You are one? Yeah, Seattle until 49. Well, then you understand. I'm not supposed to. I tell you, what they gave me just broke down the case you were building. Now it looks like there was nothing to it. What'd she say? Last night, did she question you as to why you thought a woman might have killed Alma Scott? Uh, yeah. A beneficiary, the only possible insurance angle in the case, by the way. Uh, she said that when you mentioned that, she figured you had something on her. When the reward was posted, she decided to give herself up. You sound like you don't quite believe her, Lieutenant. Well, I'll be honest. I don't know. You think she's protecting her brother? I said I don't know. Uh, you want to talk to him? If it'll help. I'll send you. Thanks. Yes, sir. That's not important. Well, he's going to ask you to sit down this way. Move over. I was surprised to hear about this. I'm surprised, too. What do you mean? Oh, it's the whole thing. I never thought I'd go this far. Get rid of people who were hurting me. Murder is pretty far. You think it was worth it? I don't know. I had to get him away from that thing. I didn't grind through the last houses for ten years to let that happen. Been taking care of them that long? Longer. I'm not beaten. If I took my mother complex out on him, sent him to school, even two years of college. I guess it was wrong. I guess I spoiled him more than Mom would have. If we're going that far, I couldn't stop when that ego got her claws into him. I don't think you killed her. Neither did that cop, but I did. When I learned she and I were going to Mexico, I went up there and headed out with her. You said you called Walter Helm. I did, but he wouldn't do anything, so I said I would. He told me he went to see Alma and that she changed her mind about going. That's not what she said to me. What then? I went there about 9.30. Told her to lay off my brother, and she laughed at me, so I killed him. Where'd you get the gun? I had it. What caliber? 32. After you killed her, what'd you do? I just stayed in the apartment for a while. Then I looked out the door, and when the people were out of sight, I left. Back way? Yeah. What street you come out on? Polk Street. No, no, you didn't. The alley doesn't go through to Polk. It turns halfway through the block, goes on to California. Well, maybe that was it. I wasn't thinking of where I was going at the moment. I don't think you were there. Yes, I was. Oh, please, he didn't kill her. He wouldn't have. You don't kill something you love, and he thought he loved her. It takes only a split second for love to turn into hate. He didn't kill her. I told you I did. Oh, Holler. Yeah? There's been a shooting out at Walter Hell. No! Oh, no! I thought you'd want to know. Oh! <laughs> Sergeant, things under control? I think so, sir. He shot his way in. The butler was hit. Tell him he's waiting for him. He managed to shoot each other. How are they? Both still alive, sir. Uh, we'll go in. This man's an insurance investigator. He's all right. Yes, sir. Thanks, Sergeant. Where's Swain? Right over there, sir. Thanks. Swain. Swain? Swain? Remember me? Yeah. Yeah. Did it... Did it kill him? We don't know yet. I... hope I did. He... took her away from me. He... he took 
flew away from me. How, Swain? He said he gave her a check and she changed her mind about going with you. He took her away from me. We'd better leave him alone. Uh, he's in pretty bad shape. A long shot, I think. Uh, Helm is over here. Hello, Helm. Never thought this would happen over some damn did you, Cover? Take it easy. What happened, Helm? I heard the shot at the door. And there he was. Why'd he come here? Uh, I don't know. There's only one reason, Helm. You know it, and we know it. Doesn't make any difference, does it? Sure. I killed her. She was going to leave. I couldn't buy her back. So I stopped her the only way I knew. No scum like he was was going to take her away. Nobody was going to take her away. Expense account item two, $134 miscellaneous. Item three, same as item one, transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $572. Remarks? I was wrong from the beginning. I'm not making excuses for it, but I wasn't as far wrong as the sister. If her false confession had ended it, she wouldn't have taken a rap for her brother, who she thought was guilty, but for Walter Helm, who she was afraid was innocent. It only proves again that you have to watch the words that go above your signature. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music by Wilbur Hatch. Edmund O'Brien can now be seen starring in the Paramount Pictures Technicolor production, Silver City. Featured in tonight's cast were Jack Moyles, Virginia Gregg, Jeanette Nolan, Herb Butterfield, High Everback, and Harry Long. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. This is Dan Coverley inviting you to join us next week at this time when Edmund O'Brien returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs>